another week, another MCP tool. But this one is really special, I promise. Today, we are going to go over the newly released serverless MCP server. The official MCP server created and maintained by AWS. This one will surely rule them all. In today's video, we are going to go over what is it? Why is this one a game changer? And how can you use it to get job interviews and demand more money? We are also going to go over a hands-on demo showing all its superpowers. In this demo, MCP creates the serverless application. Not me, MCP. MCP writes the necessary infrastructure as code, such as SAM or confirmation, as well as the application files. MCP evaluates the application against best practices. This one I really, really like. This tool can evaluate your application against official AWS serverless best practices, and it can even give a grade. Then I mess up the application, sneaky, sneaky, and then MCP fixes it. And all this happens in minutes with plain English. Before we jump into the demo, let's understand the concepts so that you can explain that to the interviewer. Serverless is cool, but there are a lot of moving pieces in any serverless architecture. So to manage it, you have three different options. The first is the traditional way. When I deployed a serverless application in production in Verizon, this is what I did. I Google search the steps, and then I implement something, something goes wrong, I go back to do Google search again, I fix it. It takes days or weeks. With large language model, you can ask large language model what's wrong or you want large language model to give you the Terraform and the code, but large language model cannot take action. It, like ChatGPT, it will just give you in the ChatGPT window, then you basically copy paste and see what's going wrong, copy that again, come back and then put that in the ChatGPT, that's how it goes. And large language model works with pre-trained data. So if something new comes up, like maybe today or a couple of days back, chances are your large language model will not have that information. So it's better than the traditional way, but it will still take hours for you to create an application or troubleshoot something. Now let's talk about large language model with MCP or model context protocol. This is why it is named model context protocol. It saves you from context switching. It can get all these different information, troubleshooting, best practices, etc., from different tools out in the internet and brings directly to the large language model. So you get all the information within the context you are working with and you don't have to switch, copy paste, all that stuff. Okay, LLM with MCP, you can create application, write files, fix issues, and even take actions, right? So this is a big difference between copy pasting from regular LLM versus LLM with MCP where whatever it is recommending you, it will actually execute it as well. So we'll see this in action. It can read command output, it can change files in the IDE and take action with other context. So it will have the context for everything that has happened before or whatever is in the folder. It can go change the code in the IDE. It can read the output from the terminal and no need to memorize commands use natural language. Is natural language is like fancy way of saying, you can just say things in plain English and it will just do it. For those reasons, it takes minutes to execute any action. And this will be the future. Almost all cloud engineer will be using this. Okay, let's understand the architecture a little bit. To use MCP, you need to have a MCP host or an application. Uh, so this, since we are developing and troubleshooting, uh, we are going to use Visual Studio Code and the client. So Visual Studio Code plus client is basically the MCP host. Uh, the client can um, access different large language model and then it also works as a MCP client. And it will have access to my AWS account and including services like Lambda using the AWS profile that I have set up in the Visual Studio Code. So you can run AWS configure, uh, to give you a secret key, secret access key, and that's how it knows which AWS account to execute commands for. This MCP client will connect to different MCP servers. 
So in this case, the MCP server, which is official MCP server for serverless created and maintained by AWS, is the serverless MCP server. And this MCP server has access to a bunch of different tools. So there could be one tool which is creating and deploying serverless application. Another tool, this one is really, really cool. And this one actually provide the best practices and rates your application against the best practices. So this one, I love it. After I tried this, tried this one, and I'm gonna show you uh, in demo as well. There are other tools which can get logs and metrics for your serverless application. And this is something that I really, really like. This MCP server is trained on decades of AWS troubleshooting guides. So basically all the troubleshooting that AWS has done for customers as well as our own infrastructure, it's all baked in. So even if something goes wrong, you can literally ask it to fix it and it will go do it. And everything, like I said before, will be in plain English. You can ask it to create your application, deploy your application, fix your issues, etc. All right, this is my trusty Visual Studio code. I have the Klein extension installed. Uh, so if you are not sure how to install Klein, check out my video where I install Klein step by step along with a demo. I'll give the link up top. So first of all, we need to install the serverless MCP server. So you can do it two ways. You can click this manage MCP server and then you can select this gear icon and uh, go to marketplace. So this is where all the MCP servers are listed. So you can search serverless. Okay, and if you scroll down, so here is the AWS serverless from AWS labs. Okay, so make sure this is AWS labs and not from anyone else. Click install. And that's it, Klein will install it. The other way is you can simply type that install AWS labs serverless MCP server, and then you can put act and then just let it go and it will go install it as well. And once it does it, you will see serverless MCP server appear like this. So now that we are in this folder and the serverless MCP server is installed, Let's ask it to create a serverless application. So I'm going to ask, can you create a simple Cloud API using serverless services? Press enter. Okay, so I know this is going a little faster. So let me show you a couple things. Look, I did not have to say, go use serverless MCP server. Based on my command, it says client. So client is the MCP host. Client wants to use a tool on AWS labs.aws serverless MCP server, right? So basically it automatically invoked uh, the tool and then I am just gonna say approve and it is going to do some stuff. Okay, so it is asking, hey, should I also do the infrastructure as code? By default, it is Sam, I'll say sure, Sam is good. All right, see how cool this is? This is creating this template in that folder and you could see it is generating stuff inside this folder as well. And it also creates the documentation for you, which is super cool. All right, it wants to deploy it. Let's do this. All right, see how now it is running command in the terminal. See how cool this is? So it can read the IDE, it can run commands in the terminal and read the output, all that good stuff. All right, so it did it. And this is the project structure. Basically you have source, create, get, update, delete, a Lambda functions, the DynamoDB. Okay, so this is the architecture. You know, I'm an architecture guy, so I like uh, showing the architecture. So the API is hosted in API Gateway and there are actually five backend methods. So the first one is uh, post, which is going to Lambda 1 to create an item in DynamoDB. Then there are actually two gets, okay? One get is to get all item from DynamoDB and the other get is to get a specific item from DynamoDB. And then uh, there is a post to update an item in DynamoDB. And then there is a delete, excuse my handwriting, which uh, deletes a specific item in DynamoDB. And there is this DynamoDB table, which all lambdas are accessing. And remember, this is out of the box default that it is creating. You can give more prompt that, hey, just create four lambdas. Well, I want lambda one to do this, da, 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 da. So you can, you can control all that. And you know what, you can even ask Klein to draw the diagram. So let's see, can you draw the system design in the readme file? 
So, okay, see, it's gonna create a stick figure, which is pretty cool, actually. If you want the latest cloud interview guide, including Gen AI interview questions and their answers, with average answers that most candidates give, and delightful answers that sets you apart and get you hired, go to cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. Again, cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. All right, back to the episode. All right, so as you could see, system design, so create items, get all items, or you can get a specific item, update item, and delete item. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Okay, let's save this. Another thing while this is doing this, I really, really like, see how uh, transparent this is. We call this responsible AI. On the top, this client is showing what is the amount of token that it is using, 76,000 out of 200,000. And it also shows the cost, which is pretty cool. All right, so seems like it is deployed. And you can log into the console and check out what it created. As you could see, this is Lambda console. If we go to DynamoDB, we could see it has created the simple CRUD API. If we explore the table items, so you could see it has created uh, one record to test it out. Okay, so at this point, let's go back and we'll do two things. One is we'll evaluate this application against the best practices. As you could see, I started a new task, but does not matter. The folder is opened, right? So it can read all the context from the folder. So here I'm going to put can we evaluate this application against serverless best practices? Okay, so it did it. So I'm just going to ask, put this in another Markdown file for future reference. And then we are gonna take a look at that. All right, let's save this. And now let's take a look at the file. All right, after analyzing your serverless card API, so it says, strengths that are following best practices, architecture and design, single responsibility, even driven, da, 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 right? And then areas of improvement, security, it's too permissive, no authentication, no input validation, no rate limiting, performance and optimization, cold start, no provision concurrency or optimization. So this is pretty cool, right? This part I really, really like, it makes the solutions architects jobs much easier. It kind of shows even the priority Recommended improvements, high priority, do this, 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 medium priority, and then low priority. It also gives the overall assessment score seven out of 10. I mean, you are the one who created the application. So you rated yourself seven out of 10, not me. My mom will not approve 70%. Anything less than 80%, no good. Okay, but anyway, jokes aside, then it gives additional resources and whatnot. Okay, now let's do one part, which I also really, really like, which is the troubleshooting part. So what I'm gonna do is, so let's do a couple things. In DynamoDB, if I go tables, this is the table. I'm just going to delete the table, okay? Let's delete this table. And then I'm gonna go to Lambda. Let's say simple CRUD API, get all items function. I'm going to click this. And then I'm gonna go to configuration, permissions. So this is the execution role. Let's see this. Okay, so here it has the thing for basic execution and get all function. How about I remove all this? Okay, see, control V, delete. Okay, so it's removed. If I go here, save. So at this point, DynamoDB table is deleted and I messed up the role as well. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask it to test, test the API along with get all items. All right, so it's gonna go to the CloudFormation and then find out the API endpoint. All right, it can see the API endpoint. Ooh, now it got the error, see? Internal server error. Now it's gonna do some troubleshooting. See, it, it, now it's looking through the logs. All right, so look at this. Perfect, now I can see the issue, the error message shows, resource not found exception, requested resource not found. This means the DynamoDB table does not exist. See, it found it in like minutes and spending only 75 cents, right? So it's pretty cool. So now what it's going to do is, okay, look, it is describing the stack, it is going to recreate the DynamoDB table. All right, so now it is listing the tables and it is not going to see our table. 
Okay, now see it's creating creating the table basically. So AWS DynamoDB create table. All right, so now it's inserting an item. So the item was inserted correctly, right? Because now the DynamoDB is there, that Lambda is good. And now it is going to test the other Lambda where we messed up the IAM role. All right, see it is checking the IAM and now it find out there is no attach policies, right? So now it is going to find out what we need. Okay, look, found the issue. The get all item function role has no policies attached, neither managed nor in line. This means it has no permissions to access DynamoDB or even write to CloudWatch logs. So now it is comparing with the create item function which worked fine. Okay, so it's doing this. Perfect, the create item has both the execution role. So now it's fixing it. Look, AWS IAM attach policy. Okay, so it attached it and now it is just testing it. Okay, so it's fixed it. Look, excellent, the get all functions is now working perfectly. Now it's gonna test it and it will be fine. So you could see how powerful this is. It creates the application, creates infrastructure as code, evaluates against best practices, also troubleshoots difficult issues. Okay, now let's get onto the big question. Will it replace your jobs? So SRE infrastructure and solutions architect bar will definitely go up. So for example, for a cloud engineer, infrastructure engineer or solutions architect, previously, the manager might have said, all right, Mr. Architect, can you create a proof of concept for this serverless application and deliver this in a week? But now they will expect it in days or even hours because they expect you to use these tools to accelerate your productivity. So more will be expected, especially entry-level jobs. Uh, before someone who is entry-level, you will be given more time to train and deliver stuff. But definitely with this, people will expect more even for entry-level positions. One thing I hear a lot is, but Raj, uh, these large language models or Gen AI is very expensive. It is literally a non-issue. I did this whole serverless application in literally less than $1, which is nothing compared to the salary of a cloud engineer. However, security is a bigger issue. As you saw, the MCP is executing different commands directly on my AWS account, right? So you have to be careful what MCP server you are using. It may run something that is malicious. So before this gets adopted broadly, the security issues do need to be sorted. And there are still kinks. Uh, for example, I did not show this in this demo. Sometimes it just goes and do some stuff that I do not intend it to do. Uh, especially when the context gets uh, larger and larger and gets closer to the 200,000 token window. It does way more stuff than I intended it to do. It creates like extra files and whatnot. So you still need to be cognizant and someone for the experienced folks who have the context of the business use case and the business knowledge. That's where your expertise comes in. You can say reject, don't do that. Instead do this. You, you have to drive this MCP tool to do what you really intended to do. Like any technology, if you adopt this, you will be fine. This kind of revolution happened before, like the industrial revolution, when the steam engine and steam machines were invented. If you think about going from horses to the automobiles, a lot of chaos about it's gonna replace all the stable jobs and all these jobs, but then new jobs will be created, right? Because these companies are never going to say, okay, we are done. Customers will always ask for more and there will be need for uh, new jobs with this Gen AI. And if you learn this and showcase this in your LinkedIn and GitHub, you can even demand more money. All right, folks, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. And if you like the video, if you found this useful, click that like button, smash it if that's something you are into. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.